who really cares about the future of firearms because oh love that sound we had it right this is the lever action 3030 i don't know if guns have gotten better but they are getting different today i'm going to show you the future of the hunting rifle it may be this it may be that and i hope it's this Today's video is brought to you by my backpack. This is the AKEC Alpha 3200 bag. I wanna show you some cool features it has. The coolest feature is, you know, you see that deer as you're hunting, you just put one hand on your gun, then you have your rip cord right here, right? Your parachute will not deploy, but look at the snap right here when I just pull this. It releases it and you have quick access to your gun so that you can hunt right away. It has some other really cool things. So it has a full carbon fiber frame. So it's very light, especially when you consider the features and pockets it has. Full carbon fiber frame. Inside you have your rain fly right here, even though this is very durable water resistant fabric. Has nice padding here, especially the lumbar is super padded. The other thing that I really like about this bag is it has pockets everywhere. A lot of hunting bags these days are getting very lightweight for the specs, but they don't have pockets. And so it's impossible to find your stuff when you're out there. Go to akec.com and use coupon code BACKFIRE to get an additional $50 off. Oh man, am I excited to show you guys these three futuristic directions for the hunting rifle industry. But to understand it, we gotta first see where we've been. We gotta get our inner John Wayne on. Oh yeah. Does any rifle give you more joy than a lever action 3030? Oh, it's so much fun. So the thing about the 3030 is they're always, you're gonna find them with either a flat tip or you know rounded tip uh, because they're all coming in this tubular magazine and during recoil, you don't want one being the firing pin to hit others. I've never actually seen that happen or even heard of it happening, but that was anyway the theory other than Hornady's lever evolution stuff. So lever actions have been around since the mid 1800s and this this type of platform was absolutely the standard for many 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 years they were extremely reliable and fast at cycling and because precision wasn't necessarily the top of the game with open sights it was a lot about the volume of lead that you could put down range right uh, funny story about lever actions this is totally true my older brother had this weird recurring nightmare where he was being attacked by zombies and he tried to shoot at him with his handgun and it was the handgun that he actually owned, but his gun would jam and the zombies had come and kill him. And this nightmare repeats for years. It bothers him to such an extent that he actually sold every semi-automatic gun that he owned and he bought only lever actions, bolt actions, and revolvers. <laughs> and as soon as he did it, the nightmare stopped but i mean man if i were hunting in a tree stand today mm, sweet but things changed right i think it really started with the winchester model 70 then the remington 700 and this guy the savage 110 so we began the era of the bolt action rifle not that they were invented at the time but it really became the standard standard in the hunting woods having that bolt action and we started to see optics coming on the guns you know this three by nine is uh, certainly that when i was kid everything was a three to nine by uh, by 40 or whatever that was the only scope that i ever saw these guns became much more accurate the ballistics got better with pointy bullets and they could just shoot a group that wasn't possible before unless you were really really good at shooting a lever action now shooting these was often done standing uh, i read a couple stories i don't have a didn't know my grandpa real real well but read a couple stories of him hunting and really all the hunting was standing shots or if if not standing it was you know on a tree limb or something like that and you look at the stocks the design of it it's designed for that it's not that super high comb uh, to get the perfect cheek weld and everything when you're laying prone um, and a super flat forehand it's meant to be gripped it has texture here because it's expecting you to be holding it in your sling and shoot and shooting at a deer right 
Let's shoot this sucker. We'll lean on my tripod here. At the time, you know, 1958, 1960, something like that is the Savage 110 when it came out. It was called the Savage 110 because it, it cost $110, which adjusted for inflation today would be $1,141. So it was a pretty expensive purchase for something, but I mean, they were advertising the price that, hey, this is accessible for everybody to get this kind of uh, accuracy out of this platform. And then we kind of moved into a new era, which is kind of where we are today. The era of the plastic firearm, right? Really, when you walk into a store today, unless you're buying, you know, expensive carbon fiber stuff, just about everything is, it is synthetic, it's plastic, um, these guns. Because we have much better machinery and computers with CNC machines and things like that, even cheap $400 guns like this, less even adjusted for inflation than, um, than guns of old, this will shoot less than one MOA out of a Ruger American. It's incredible what we can do with these guns, but this is hardly a legacy. Like if this is the gun that I hand down to Ruger and Cole and Faith when I die, that's kind of sad. It just it doesn't feel like uh, it's anything special to hand down, right? Their guns are made to be cheap, but still have amazing precision, and that's awesome. So that's where we are today. Where are we going in the future now? What is a futuristic hunting rifle look like? Well, here's one option. This is the, uh, the direction that I really, really, really hope we don't go as an industry, but maybe the truth. So there's nothing wrong with this gun specifically. This is a Franke Momentum Elite, actually, that many of you guys have been asking me to review, and so I'm super excited about it. But what's interesting about this gun is it is chambered in Wait for it, wait for it. He dramatically reaches into a box, he pulls it up. It looks like a pencil from mini golf. What is it? No, that is the 350 Legend. You'll see it's a straight wall cartridge. It's not bottlenecked. It doesn't you know, come in so you have a fatter column of powder. That's intentional to have a narrow column of powder and a big 375 caliber bullet because they don't want this thing to go far. They don't want far trajectory. And the problem is because of where we are in hunting right now. With urbanization, they say, well, is that even safe to be having guns that can shoot miles when you know you may be hunting just a, you know the back 40? It's kind of dangerous. And so in states like Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, I think parts of Michigan, I don't know, you guys will correct me. There are either requirements to use or at least some areas where you have to use a straight wall cartridge or a slug, something like that, because it's an awesome cartridge. I like 350 Legend, but it, it's a compromise. It's, it's intended to allow us to use these platforms in a season where we can't shoot long range and we shouldn't be shooting long range. I hope this isn't the direction we go overall, though I understand the, the need for it in some places. You know, you look in even places like Utah, Idaho, Montana, Colorado, and every year we're chipping away at what type of rifle you can bring into the hunting woods. You know, we're chipping away, we're saying, uh, should you be allowed to use scopes? Should you be allowed to use illumination on your scopes? You know, uh, what caliber of rifles can we use? We're chipping away at what's allowed. You can't use trail cameras, all kinds of regulations, because they want us to kill fewer animals. Hunters got good at what we do, right? And so that's one direction of the future of the hunting rifle is neutering it. Here's option two for the future of the hunting rifle. This is one that a lot of people are excited about. It's the AR platform. So the AR-15 has been used in the deer woods for a long time. It's, you know, obviously shooting little 223 caliber bullets, but for a whitetail, it's perfectly capable if you're using a good quality bullet. People like the idea of using the same rifle that they use for tactical home defense, and then also taking it out to the deer woods. There are a lot of advantages, obviously. It's semi-automatic. They can be very compact. They're cool rifles to use, but the AR platform is getting better and better. Cool things are happening. Oh, you guys, 
I love this gun so much. This is from Faxon Firearms. Oh, you guessed it. This is an 8.6 Blackout. So this is an AR platform, but this bullet doesn't fit in an AR-15. It needs the AR-10 or the AR-308 more, more correctly, right? Q has designed this cartridge. Faxon has been making barrels and complete rifles. This is interesting. This is shooting a big old fat 8.6 millimeter bullet. It's shooting it out of a tiny little cartridge. What brass did they use? The same they use in your Creedmoor, um, but shooting a heavy big bullet so that it's intentionally going slower, so that it works in shorter barrels and can be shot subsonic to be dead silent or supersonic. I got this one in a 16 inch barrel because Joe Biden is coming after your AR-15 and this is gonna be a felony in a few months, which we need to be talking about in a future video. Okay, no, I'm stopping. Rant is entered here. You guys, there is nothing more important for you to be doing on the day of midterms, I think that's November 8, than getting out and voting. I don't care what state you're in, how Republican, how Democrat it is, you need to get out and vote. This country is screwed up. We are getting robbed blind by these politicians, and it's time to turn back the tide. If you live in Utah, please vote for Mike Lee and not Evan McMullen. Whatever state you're in, please, for goodness sake, sakes, look for somebody who has an actual good track record of supporting the Second Amendment. I digress. But this is an awesome direction for the AR platform. This thing, they've taken out Cape Buffalo with this thing in a tiny little 10 or 12 inch barrel, right? Um, they're doing incredible things with this platform, it's shooting heavy bullets. Every three inches, the rifle twists one, the bullet twists one time. And so it's spinning so fast that that rotational energy apparently um, has quite a bit of terminal effect. I'm anxious to test that for myself. So that's a cool direction, is what can we do with the AR platform? Then we got direction number three with the future of the firearm. This is the one that gets me going. This is the one that I'm most excited about, the direction that I wanna see rifle manufacturers heading. So it's not so much just the rifle, it's this whole system. Uh, come check this out. You guys, this is my dream rifle. Oh, I love this gun so much, man. This is like, I look at it and I'm like, what would I even improve on this gun? This to me is perfection for a hunting rifle, precision rifle. So this is my 7PRC. I've reconfigured it with some different things now and I just love it. This is the MDT Hunt 26 chassis that I got from Preferred Barrel Blanks. Preferred Barrel Blanks also did this barrel. This is a 20 inch barrel, really short. Most hunting barrels are 24, 26 inch, but this is a Magnum cartridge in just a 20 inch barrel. And I've got really impressive velocities. I have on the Backfire uh, website, all my data for the 7PRC. So anyway, check this out. This has an Arca rail all along the bottom. If you guys haven't seen this, I, I, I keep telling manufacturers, hey, from now on, every single gun, full arc rail all along the bottom. It's, it's such a game changer, and I hate it when people say game changer, but it is. Let me show you how it works. So this is a tripod, same that you might use for photography, but this one's for shooting. This is from Sunway Photo, they sent this out to me. So this has Arca right on top. So if I wanna take a standing shot, I just plop my gun right on there, lock it down. Ready to go, ready to shoot, and then I can release it, and look, I'm like a gunner in a turret. This thing is freaking awesome. And so if you get in a good position here, even without locking it, I mean, you could take a 500 yard shot without even locking the tripod. It is just rock steady. It's incredible. And then you lock the thing down to take your shot and this thing will not move. I mean, it's as steady almost as steady as if you're prone on a bipod. It's incredible. And so this has, this changes hunting for me. In fact, it did yesterday because I was out on a deer hunt in Eastern Utah and I was looking for deer for days and all I could see was elk. Elk after elk after elk after elk. In fact, I had this beautiful bull 
just grazing on this hill for like three hours in front of me and I didn't have an elk tag. Couldn't find a buck uh, to save my life. And so I'm sitting on this hillside my last morning, yesterday morning, and it's thick, thick, thick brush in front of me. I just found one little spot that I could kind of glass from. There's a 50 foot cliff at the bottom of the ravine. And then, you know, 350, 400 yards away is this hillside that I can glass up perfectly. The problem with that scenario is, how do you make the shot to 350, 400 yards? Because you have to stand up to get above the brush and that's a far shot. I can't shoot 400 yards standing, not a chance. And so I break out this tripod from Sunway Photo. I have it standing up there. I get my Vortex Fury um, range finding binoculars. I can get the range on it and it tells me in the binocular what to dial my scope dial that sucker to 2.75 MOA, and I just leave my tripod and gun right there, pointing at where I am trying to hunt. Like, I'm just standing there, a buck never came in, by the way, but a coyote comes walking in. Coyote comes and just stands there, and I'm like, okay, this is like almost too easy. I got my bino harness on, got it, dial, and... Boom, just standing up, a 300 yard shot was like, I was, so confident in that shot because, I mean, the crosshairs were just dead. They were not moving at all. This is an incredible platform. Everything is made of carbon fiber on this thing, from the handle to the forend, the barrel. And so a platform like this is just incredible. I mean, this is no question my dream gun. And I'm, I'm loving 7PRC. Um, by the way, Preferred barrel blanks can do this. Uh, you could do a 20 inch 7PRC barrel and get it as a prefit for your Ruger American, your Tika, your Defiance, your whatever action you got, a Bergara. Um, as long as they make a prefit for just about everything and you can just screw on a new barrel, as long as you have a long action action, then you'd be set to go uh, with a 7PRC. It's really, really cool. To me, this is the future of the hunting rifle. I want to prove it. Well, I'm going to set out here a target. Who cares? We can put it anywhere up there. Uh, we'll see how far this is. And you can make a first round impact from a standing position, whatever, up to 500 yards. It, it's just it's easy, it's not that hard to make incredible shots. Let me show you. I'm really not any kind of amazing shot, but with this gear, it becomes pretty approachable. Ha! Nailed it! There's water spewing everywhere. It's incredible, like, really, I'm not trying to show off. Honestly, any of you guys with this kind of gear can make a shot like that. It's incredible what hunting rifles have become and where they're going. So my question for you is, where do you want to see hunting rifles going? Do you think we need more neutered guns to really make more hunts approachable? It's a reasonable perspective. Is the AR platform going to bring the future to us or is it the insane precision rifle? What do you think? What's your perfect hunting rifle look like?